Oh my goodness, you guys. You want to hear about the fact? The definite, real, I promise you, total, 100% fact. That there is a J1A Pennsylvania Railroad steam locomotive that was buried underground. F for real. I promise. Yeah, we're dealing with another locomotive that found its way to a really odd location. But um, in this particular case, not only do I not have a lot of confidence in this particular theory, uh, but also it is based purely on conjecture and hearsay and a whole bunch of what I would argue to be coincidences that ultimately amounts to no, no, this honestly makes no sense when you think about it. But I have been approached for this particular story multiple times, and recently I even got a actually very well thought out email from a follower, thanks Drew, who gave me a whole bunch of information about this. And I understand people like the mysterious stories, the, the definitely real, possible, oh my goodness, conspiracy theories around here, even though I try to stick to facts, but there are a bunch of facts that are in this tale intermixed with ridiculous conjecture, but let's talk about it. We're talking about Pennsylvania Railroad, specifically Penzi 6435, who was a class J1A. Now, the J1s as a whole were 2104 Texas types that were built between 1942 and 1944. They were very powerful locomotives, capable of delivering 94,000 pounds of force in tractive effort, plus an additional 15,000 pounds of force if they used their attached booster engines. They were big, impressive, and exactly what the Pensy needed at the time. During World War II, the locomotives they had just really weren't cutting it, particularly for heavy freight trains. And as a result, they actually borrowed two locomotives, a 2664 Class A, from Norfolk and Western, and a Texas from Chesapeake and Ohio. The Penzi actually really liked the Texas, so they produced their own versions of that one, resulting in the J1, and eventually the J1As. A total of 125 were built at Penzi's own shops in Juniata, Pennsylvania, and they were one of many locomotives to be nicknamed War Babies, as, well, that's when they were built. But they would remain in service not that much longer after World War II was over, as by the 1950s, Pennsylvania Railroad was starting to dieselize, and they would scrap a whole bunch of their steam locomotives. In fact, they were almost as bad as New York Central in this department. Very few original Penzi locomotives were held for preservation. A lot of their classes were rendered extinct, and that included the J1s. Except, hmm, hmm, maybe not. See, the Pennsylvania Railroad, like many, kept pretty good track of the disposition of their engines. And for some weird reason, 6435 in particular, one of the J1As, as I said, is absent from the list of scrapped engines. This simple omission has spiraled out of control into some outrageous theories, but the one that's been settled upon is that 6435 wasn't scrapped, she was buried. Which, okay... It wouldn't be the first time a locomotive was buried in the ground, but the context here is important. See, the reason why 6435 is believed to have been buried, specifically at Penzi's Pitcairn Yard, is because it's thought that at least one employee had a soft spot for the locomotives and wanted to try to save one. So, he took it upon himself to bury this engine in the ground, in the hopes that she'd be discovered later. Now, already, I got... So many problems with this, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. The theory goes that the spot where the engine would have been buried is now covered by Norfolk Southern's main line, as well as a road bridge. And to date, the earth there hasn't been directly disturbed, nor has anyone checked to see if there's something large and metal buried just underneath the ground. That's the story. That someone took it upon themselves, instead of sending 6435 for scrapping, just buried her in the ground. And, you know, I understand that we as preservationists are very, very, very desperate to try to save as many of these historical engines as possible, especially one that would be one of a kind. But I gotta be honest, guys, like I said when I started this, I have no faith in this story because it's just that. 
a story, a tale that was spun over the years, because there are so many holes that can be poked in it, that you might as well go out and get yourself some Swiss cheese, which at least that would taste pretty good. I like Swiss cheese. For one thing, okay, so we have a Texas here, a 2104 steam locomotive. Not a small engine by any stretch of the imagination. And one guy, one dude said, I'm gonna bury this thing. How? When would he possibly have done that? And you mean to tell me no one knew that he had done this? No one suspected. So, all right, from the get-go, it would be nearly impossible for a single man to accomplish this feat without being noticed. Therefore, more than one person was definitely involved. And the more people you add in any kind of silent conspiracy, the more mouths there are to keep shut. And are you telling me that not a single one of these guys who knew that this had happened has said anything since that time? No one. Not a single soul has mentioned it. Even after Penzi went under, and after they merged with New York Central, became Penn Central, and completely exploded, like, no one said anything even after that about this engine that was still there? And if 6435 wasn't scrapped, you mean to tell me that Penzi just ignored the fact that they had never received the scrap value for that particular engine? You mean to tell me that they would have just not actually bothered to check to see where that money had gone off to, why they had never received it, why this engine wasn't marked down for scrapping? Oh, no, they probably did and probably realized what I am about to tell you. This is a simple clerical error. They happen. Even in the most meticulously crafted archives from any company, there's going to be a mistake. So it's likely far more than her being buried, that her scrapping simply wasn't written down. Because the act of burying her, getting a whole bunch of people involved to accomplish that feat, and then just not saying anything about it, like why? Why wouldn't you say anything about that years after the fact? You think Penzi employees are specifically staffed by the Pirates of the Caribbean? Like, come on now, this is ridiculous. You have to consider how difficult it would be to bury something as large as 6435, and then hide it from a company that was desperate for money at the time? Listen, but the story has attracted much attention over the years, to the point that people online even claim it is absolute fact, when, I promise you, it, it probably isn't. It, this is probably just a concocted tale that's been passed down and recirculated over the years, to the point that it's probably not even recognizable as the original rumor. One person says this engine was left out of the archives, another person says this engine must still be around, and the next person says, she's buried and it must be here, even though there's absolutely no verifiable evidence of that being true at all. And as recently as 2017, there was even a Facebook group that was trying to get permission to go down to the area she allegedly is in and look over it, possibly with a magnometer, to see if there's any evidence that she's actually there. And I'll be real here, I wouldn't mind that. I would not mind someone taking a magnometer to the area with permission and just checking. Because there is also the possibility, as ridiculous as I think this story is, that I could be wrong. Because I don't have any evidence to prove that she was scrapped either. And that's kind of the difficulty when it comes to 6435. Because of the, what I believe to be a clerical error, we have no evidence either way. She's stuck in a perpetual state of limbo, historically speaking. She is a Schrodinger's cat of a locomotive, neither dead nor alive, trapped in this remarkable concept of, was she scrapped? We don't actually know that. Is she buried there? Probably not, but maybe, and it's the maybe that gets people. It's what gets the imagination running. It's why we get ridiculous tales like this. And again, just because I don't believe it, doesn't mean I'm gonna suggest that it not be looked into. I do think it is worth it, at least for a day trip, to go down and check it with a magnometer, see if there's something large, metal, possibly locomotive-shaped in that area. Because if there's nothing, then there's nothing. Great. I was right. Woohoo. Let's go home and mourn the fact that the J1s are truly extinct. But there might be something. And if there's something, well, that sort of changes the discussion a little bit. Because then we have to bring up the point of, okay, um, can we get permission to actually excavate the area? Can we possibly look to see if she's actually there, if that's actually her? 
And if so, can we get her out and put her in a museum? I mean, it's hard to say what condition she would be in after all this time. But I do think it would be remarkably foolish of me to suggest not checking it out, given how relatively simple it would be to do so. We wouldn't be jumping to a big-time excavation project until we do a cursory examination with a magnometer anyway. That part is relatively easy. And it is one of those situations where, yeah, I don't think she's there, but quietly, in the back of my mind, I kind of hope I'm wrong. It would be nice to be wrong in this case, because that means there's one more J1A that still exists and could be held for posterity. I, I don't think so, but it would be nice, so we'll have to see what happens. Probably nothing, since the Facebook group uh, seems to have died when it comes to any and all interest in possibly looking into this. And I don't think anyone else has taken this story seriously since then, probably because it is legitimately ridiculous. But maybe some of you out there will get your imaginative gears working, and we'll get permission at some point to actually walk down there, take a look-see, and prove that I'm right or I'm wrong. There's really only two options here. And with that, a special thank yous to all my underwater train finders, some dude 267 Orange Glass, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitson 131-232, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, Tommy Rossini, Brian, Jack Carson's Rural Videos, Lord Off 444, Mark Holding, Murder Drones Doll, A Person 723, DM Travel Typhoon, Royal Hudson 2860, Iserver 1405, Charles Kwiatkowski, Matt Weaver, Tom Red Lion, Ennis Productions 8104, Hannah Bird, Hendrick Motorsports Fan 5, Wheeljack 8401, Rescues Greyhounds, The Baxter, Caleb Crosswhite, Ohio Trucker 1, Joshua Long, Andrew Bowen, Josh Johnson, Hayden DeGro, Caleb Rainwaters, Prez Drenton, Master of None, Arizona Hot Rail, Liam Wright, Mr. Sleepy, Dr. Racer 78, Travis Delinsky, and Jared Brussel. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fun farewell.